Hey there, I want to talk to you about the fourth normal form. And I want to talk to you about the fourth normal form from a particular perspective, not the technical perspective that involves the language of normalization so much as from a common sense data modeling, ER diagramming focused perspective. Because um, from, the no from the normalization language perspective, uh, fourth normal form is hard to recognize violations of and is incredibly complex. But from the perspective of the ER diagramming that we've already been doing in this class, it's trivially easy to avoid and very simple. So I want to show you what it looks like and how easy it is for us doing what we've already learned to avoid it. Here goes. So what does the fourth normal form prohibit? It prohibits the following. Multiple independent multi-valued attributes in the same table as we have in the following situation. So we've got some employee information and employees can have multiple languages in which they're proficient and we need to make record of that. And they can have multiple professional certifications and the languages that they speak and write and their professional certifications have nothing to do with one another. So we have a situation like this. And in terms of entering the data, you can do it in a number of different ways that have consequences in terms of modeling. But since this is a bad practice anyway, we are not going to worry about the disjoint or overlapping and other approaches to putting information in this table because we don't want this table. But in any case, so we have employee ID one, who knows who that is, but they can speak French, uh, but they have no certifications. And we have employee two, they can speak German and they are A plus certified and employee two does not speak another language, but also is a CISSP certification mm -hmm. and so forth. You don't want this. This table violates the fourth normal form at, because you've got these two independent multi-valued attributes and uh, you have some necessary either um, sp sparseness with a lot of nulls or repeating information. This is bad mojo. Okay, so let's talk for a moment about why we would never had do this if we wound up or if we followed our entity relationship diagramming in the first place. So how would we model this situation? Well, we'd have uh, an underlying employee entity and some multi-valued attributes. And we've already, we've already learned that when you have multi-valued attributes, even though they are facts about the employee entity, uh, we need to model them using weak entities and indicate cardinality wise that a given employee can have multiple certifications. And while it is the case, certainly that a certification will be possessed by multiple of our employees, potentially, we are not interested in that. We are only interested in the certifications within the context of the employees that possess them. And that's a little bit tricky. So if you are confused or curious about that, I encourage you to go back and review our weak entity and multi-valued attribute videos. But uh, taking that as given, um, we would have this sort of any relationship diagram. We would create a table for the employee entity. We would create a table for the certification entity, the weak valued uh, entity, and um, we would create one for the language. And what we would wind up with is entirely consistent with the, the fourth normal form. We would have um, a, an, an employee table and that would be E number and all of the other attributes related to employee. We'd have a cert table and that would consist strictly of employee number and the certification, right? And so we'd have employee one and uh, A plus and employee one and CISSP and so forth. And then finally, we would have the language table and that would look like E number and language. And that would be employee number one and French and employee two, oops, sorry, two and French and German and whatever. And we would avoid just by applying our common sense entity relationship diagramming and translation rules through our data model, we would never run up against violations of the fourth normal form. 
And if you try to read fourth normal form in the normalization literature uh, using that nomenclature and that approach and, and super keys and composite keys and multi-value dependencies and uh, functional dependencies, it seems much more complicated than in fact it is. And that's really all I wanted to reveal to you within the context of this class and this video. Uh, I hope that is uh, revelatory. You can now tell people that you understand everything that you need to as a competent data model about modeler about the fourth normal form. There you have it. Study hard and I will see you online.